auto industry was bailed out today. $17.4 billion in emergency loans to prevent GM and Chrysler from collapsing during an eight-minute long televised announcement, time to end before the stock market opened. President Bush laid out a so-called rescue package replete with conditions, deadlines, and concessions, especially from the unions. In our fourth story in the countdown, instead of bankruptcy for two of the big three, the federal government will tap the fund initially set aside to bail out the financial industry. But unlike the lifeline thrown into the banks, this one has strings attached. By giving the auto companies a chance to restructure, we will shield the American people from a harsh economic blow at a vulnerable time. And we will give American workers an opportunity to show the world once again they can meet challenges with ingenuity and determination and bounce back from tough times and emerge stronger than before. Please submit your receipts. At the same time, Mr. Bush was outlining his plan, which includes a requirement that management and the United Auto Workers get union wages on par with those of foreign automakers. Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson was suggesting Congress release the second half of that $700 billion package approved for Wall Street. His reasoning, the auto bailout had basically exhausted the remainder of the first half. This were President-elect Obama, who encouraged the current president to use the TARP money shortly after the election. He echoed his support, but not without putting the onus on management management as well. I do want to emphasize uh, to the big three automakers and their executives that uh, the uh, American people's patience is running out uh, and that they should seize on this opportunity over the next several weeks and months to come up with a plan that is sustainable. Uh, and that means that they're going to have to make some hard choices. Meantime, Republican senators, many of whom are from states in bed with those foreign automakers and who had blocked an earlier piece of legislation that bore striking resemblances to this one, they are not happy. Lindsey Graham objecting to TARP money for the car companies in a statement, quote, these funds were supposed to be used to stabilize financial institutions. The TARP legislation would certainly not have passed if we had known it was going to be used for this purpose. Likewise, for John McCain, quote, just last week the Senate rejected a bailout plan because it failed to provide assurances that the domestic manufacturers would fundamentally change the way they do business to ensure their long-term viability. I find it unacceptable that we would leave the American taxpayer with a tab of tens of billions of dollars while failing to receive any serious concessions from the industry. We're joined now by Robert Kuttner, co-editor of The American Prospect and author of Obama's Challenge, America's Economic Crisis and the Power of a Transformative Presidency. Good evening, sir. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Let's start with the obviously the, the most relevant questions. Was this necessary and is it going to work? Well, I think it's necessary to give the automakers some breathing room if they're going to restructure themselves. I mean, we've got a very serious recession. Auto sales are down 40 percent. And uh, the question is, are you going to let these companies go bankrupt? Or are you going to give them one last chance to try to produce cars that are fuel efficient, that Americans want to buy, that don't fall apart after a few years? Uh, but this is going to take a little bit of time. This is not going to be done in three or four months. What I find interesting is that senators like Graham and McCain are being very tough about what they expect from the automakers uh, in the way of concessions, in the way of accountability. You don't hear any of this uh, when it comes to the much, much larger sums that are going to the banks. Well, certainly, and that, that's the, perhaps the most intriguing subplot to this, $17.4 billion for the auto industry, $250 now for a billion for the banks, and I guess still another, uh, in total, it'll work out to around 682 point something for the banks in billions. I, I, again, I made the joke about save your receipts. It's as if uh, the banks and the mortgage, uh, mortgage companies didn't even have to sign for the money. It was just take as much as you need. Where is the that, that scream for any kind of... Uh, uh, clarity or uh, accountability from those uh, financial institutions. Well, Wall Street obviously has uh, more powerful friends uh, in Washington than the automakers do. And um, <clears throat> when, you, when you think about it, uh, it's, it's easier to run a bank if you don't uh, try and run it like a casino than it is to figure out how to make a car that people want to buy. And uh, both sets of executives have not been doing uh, stellar jobs, but you would think for the $700 billion dollars, that the taxpayers are giving to the banks, you would have even something approaching the kind of accountability that's being demanded uh, of the automakers, and yet Paulson is just shoveling out the money. The Treasury is not uh, demanding uh, any kind of accounting about what the banks are doing with it. You just have to hope that when the Obama team comes on uh, in a month from now, they'll do a better job uh, both with the banks and with the automakers. This 
uh, loan, bailout, uh, bridge loan, various descriptions used today, a part of this plan under the President uh, Bush scheme called for the industry, the auto industry, to become viable by March 31st. Does anybody, has anybody defined viable and, and whatever it is, is it possible by March 31st? No, totally impossible. I mean, you're talking about a radical restructuring of the industry, uh, which could take a year, could take two years. And uh, I think it's, it's their last chance. Uh, Obama will probably give them more money, but he will have much more accountability. The government will probably be involved uh, in the restructuring. You know, there's a historic parallel, Keith. Uh, in 1941, when we went to war, uh, they shut down the assembly lines, and within eight months, they retooled the auto assembly lines to make tanks and bombers and fighters. And uh, this was the ingenuity of American industry, American workers uh, on display. Uh, if we can do that to win a war, we ought to be able to do that to save this industry. But it's not going to be done by March 31st. Obviously, everything gets done um, with, uh, with somebody's uh, uh, palm being greased. And I don't mean that necessarily with, with, with money being handed, but their interests being solved. Uh, if Hank Paulson now responds to this by saying, look, well, now the rest of the, of the, the front half of the, of the bailout for um, Wall Street is gone. Now you have to release the rest of the money to the financial institutions. Did that, is, there, is, the, is it as straightforward a quid pro quo as that looks? It, 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 did, did this thing happen for Detroit because Paulson was uh, somehow empowered to go and ask for the rest of the, uh, uh, the mortgage bailout? No, I think the two things have nothing to do with each other. I mean, I think Bush did not want to see the auto industry fold uh, as his final legacy in his last uh, 30 days in office. And I think uh, Paulson has such little credibility with Congress, given how he's run this bailout, that they're not going to give him the, the remaining $350 billion. They're going to wait for the Obama team to come in. They're going to put more conditions on it. And uh, one hopes the Obama team will do a better job. I mean, don't forget, originally this was going to be money used to buy up toxic uh, bonds, and then Paulson couldn't make that work, so he turns around and just gives the money to the banks. Robert Kuttner, the co-editor of The American Prospect, author of Obama's Challenge. Great thanks for your time tonight, Thank sir. Thank you.